Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question prison cells after n days. So first I'm going to be explaining the logic behind this question and then we're going to write uh, the code in Python. And before we do that, let's just go over the question real quick. Okay, there are eight prison cells in a row and each cell is either occupied or vacant. Each day, whether the cell is occupied or vacant changes according to the following rules. If a cell has two adjacent neighbors that are both occupied or both vacant, then the cell becomes occupied. Otherwise, it becomes vacant. Uh, note that the first and the last prison rows cannot have adjacent neighbors. Okay, so we describe the current state of the prison in the following ways. So if it has a value of one, it means that it's occupied. And if it has a value of zero, it means that it's not occupied. Given the initial state of the prison, return the state of the prison after n days. So we need to uh, return how the prison is going to look like after n days. Let's first visualize how this question is actually going to look like. So over here, we have our cells. We have eight cells. And this is how it's going to start off. So this is day zero. So now let's look at how day one is going to look like. Now, one thing we should observe is that the first and the last cells are always going to be zero because in the rules state that there have to be at least two adjacent cells. So the first one only has one adjacent cell and the last one also only has one adjacent cell. So starting from day one onwards, the first cell and the last cell are always going to be zero no matter what. Now let's look at this. So both the adjacent cells are the same. So this is going to stay as one. Now, if you look at this, over here as well, both the adjacent cells are the same. Both of them are one. So now this is also going to become one. Now we're going to go to this one. Uh, over here, both the adjacent cells are not the same. So it's going to become zero. Similarly, over here, both adjacent cells are not the same. So zero. And over here, same thing. They're not the same. And so it's zero. Uh, over here as well, not the same. So it's a zero. And finally, the ending over here is a one. But right from day one onwards, it's going to become a zero. So now this is this trend is going to follow on all the way up to day n. And day n is whatever they specify. So I'll just show you how the second day is going to look like for this. So the first one's going to be zero, then zero. They're not the same, so zero again, not zero again. These two are the same, so it becomes a one. Then we get a one again one more one so we have one two three four five six seven the last one is going to be zero okay so now we have to think about how are we going to approach this question so our first so at least my first thought when approaching this was to iterate through how many other days there are so there are 100 days we're going to go through the cycle 100 times until we reach day 100 and we're going to print that result out but if you look at the question n can be as big as 10 to the power of 9. So this, if we had such a huge n value, this is going to take a lot of time and it's not at all efficient. So now we're going to try to look for a better solution and that involves looking for some sort of pattern. So let's see how it looks like. Before we look for the pattern, let me just first explain to you a more simplified version of this so you can understand what we're actually doing. So let's say we have some sort of series. And it's just going to look like this. So now if I ask you, do you find any repeat, a repetition or anything uh, similar in this? So the first instinct is going to be that, yes, there's a base unit of AB, which is being repeated. So you have AB, then AB, AB, AB. So it's just AB being repeated how many ever times. Now, Let's start, let me just number this out to show you how it looks like. Okay, so right now we have uh, eight elements and I started numbering from zero. So our base unit, let's just call it base unit for now, is AB. And AB consists of two elements. So it has two elements in it. It has, the first one is A and the second one is B. Now let's say we want to find what is the 10th element of this series? So how can we do that? So the first, the easiest way we can think of is just to continue 
until we reach the number 10. So A, B, then that's 8, 9, and A, B again, 10, 11. So now we reach number 10 and we got our answer over here. So the 10th element is A. But what if we want to find something like the 100th element? We could just keep doing uh, writing it until then, but that would take up a lot of time. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever element we want. So in this case, we want the 10th element and we're going to find the modulo of that. Uh, so 10 mod 2 because we have two elements. And if you don't know what mod means, it basically means that you're finding the remainder. So 10 mod 2 is equal to 0. So this corresponds to the 0th element, which is A. Now let's say we want to find, uh, let's just say the seventh element. So the seventh element. So what we're going to do, same thing again. We're going to do seven. We're going to do seven mod two, which equals to one. So when you do seven divided by two, you get a remainder of one. So you have one. And so this responds to the first, uh, the one at the first index. So uh, the seventh element is going to be B. And if we look up over here, the seventh element is B. Now we're going to use the same logic to solve our problem. We're now going to try to implement the logic which I showed you previously into our program. So to do that, what we're going to do is first we're going to iterate through the days and we're going to keep iterating through and adding those uh, the cells, the state of the cells to a dictionary. And there's going to be a point where we're no longer going to come up with new states of the cell. And at that point, that means that we found a pattern and then we don't need to look for any more patterns. So let's see how we can get to that point. Now, before we do that, I created a function over here called next day. So what this function does is it takes in the cells and it's going to show how the output is going to look like for the next day. So we're going to call a new cell, which is going to have eight zeros. So eight elements, all zeros then we're not we're going to ignore the zeroth element and the last element because they're going to be zero regardless so we're only going to go from 1 all the way up to 6 so after in that for loop we're going to see if we have an element and if the element before that and after that are the same that means that element is a 1 and if they are not the same then it's just going to stay as zero. So we're going to do this uh, through our to our first all the way to the sixth index in our list. And after we get that done, we're going to return the new cell. Okay, so now let's go into our main program. So prison after n days. So over here, I created a diction empty dictionary, and this is where we're going to store all of the states of the cell. Okay, so. After we have that, we're going to go inside of a for loop. So for x in range 0 comma n. Uh, now, let's say so in the beginning, uh, we're going to first convert the cells to a string. And we're doing that because uh, you can't store a list as the key inside of a dictionary. So we have to first convert that into a string. OK, so we converted that. Now we need to see if that uh, state of the cell already exists in the dictionary. So if it exists inside of the dictionary, then we're going to go inside of this if loop. But let's see what happens when we don't, if it doesn't exist. So in the beginning, it's not going to exist and we're going to go inside of this else. Over here, we're going to add that state as the key value and we're going to equate it to x. Then we're going to change the value of cells to the value of the cells next day. So we're going to be calling our next day function onto the current state of cells. And then it's going to repeat again. So we're going to keep going through. And then there's going to be a point where we've covered all of the possible solutions. Sorry, where we've covered all the possible states of the cell. And then we're going to go inside of this if loop because uh, there's no more unique cell states. Once inside of this if loop, sorry, just ignore this. Okay, so once we're inside of this if loop, we need to find the length of the loop. 
Now we could, uh, our first thought may be that the length of the loop is the same as our dictionary, as the length of our dictionary, but that's not actually true and here's why. Okay, so when we look at this right over here, we can find that the repeating unit is AB. And AB start, like, it starts repeating from the beginning. So the first thing is AB, and you can find that repetition. But this is not always the case. So in, our, in the case of our cell, we might have something like C, then A, then B. So over here, there still is a repeating unit of AB. But before we actually get to that repetition, we have um, an other element, which is not part of the uh, repetition. So in that case, we're not going to include this element. And usually for in our program, that is uh, this, uh, this misfit of an element is uh, usually the day zero. So uh, we're going to ignore that and take the length of the rest of the size of the dictionary, ignoring the misfit. Okay, in order to find the exact length of the loop by ignoring the offsets or the misfits as we called it earlier, what we're going to do is we're going to take x, so the value of x it is at right now, and we're going to subtract that by the first state of cells which got repeated. So if that state of cells was the, was the very first initial cell, then it's going to uh, be have a value of 0. But it may be 1 or 2 or anything else. So we don't actually know for certain what the first cell is, which is being repeated. So which is why we're going to be using this to do that. Finally, then we're going to call this function again. Uh, we're going to uh, call it again on our cells. But this time, instead of giving the value of n, we're first going to subtract x from that. Now we're subtracting x because we're already iterated through the number of days x times. So let's say x had a value of 10. That means that we've already went past 10 days. And uh, we, we already accounted for that. So we're going to first subtract that. And then we're going to find the modulo of that value and the length of the loop. To understand this better, let's take it back to our previous analogy with the a and the b, a's and the b's. So a and b was one unit with two unique, character, uh, two unique characters, A and B. So similarly, we want to find how many unique characters or uh, states of cells, in this case, do we have in our dictionary? And that's the length of the loop. So by doing this, we're going to get a value which is less than or equal to how, uh, the length of the dictionary. So then we're going to return this value and uh, we're going to get our answer. But uh, in some cases, our uh, x is going to be for x in range 0, comma n. So let's say x, n is a really small number, let's say 2 or 3, where we don't yet have a pattern. So in those cases, it's just going to exit out and return the current cells. By using trial and error, I found out that the unique number of cells that there are 14. So there are 14 unique number of cells. So technically, let's say we have a really big number. We're first going to run through this 14 times, then we're going to go inside of this if loop, and then we're going to run it for an extra of how many ever this number is. So this number is either 14 or less than 14. Okay, and then let's finally, let's put this into our leak code and see what it gives us. Our code didn't run, but then I found the problem is that uh, we don't need to call values over here, so that's actually incorrect. So if you remove that and uh, submit it, it should be working. Okay, so our submission got accepted. And finally, do let me know if you have a better and more optimized solution to this. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you.